Hello Internet! I just want to show you in a very short video uh, the benefits of the new version for an Apache Spark 3.2. At first, I'm operating in a Jupyter lab. I have Python 3. Oh, let's see. I have Python 3A12 installed. I'm running on a local notebook. I import PySpark. My PySpark version is, just to make sure, 3.2. I set my environmental variables. And, oh yeah, wait a second. Just restart the kernel that I show you what can happen if you start from the very beginning. So Python, PySpark, your environmental variables. And you get an error that because maybe you have your PySpark driver not activated. So if you do it, I use here Jupyter, I use a lab, and you have a pi error ignore time zone. Don't ask me why you still have to set it. But let's say it is necessary and then you just start your Spark session. Just to make sure you have Spark session in memory, you have your Spark UI. And if you check your executors, you should have here, where are we? Two cores, cores two, two cores here are activated. This is beautiful. So now what we have here in Apache Spark 3.2, it is available in Databricks Runtime and the Community Edition on the cloud version, Runtime 10, is that we have a beautiful introducing pandas API on Apache Spark to uniform small data API and big data API. And this is the point I want to focus on. Pandas are now on Apache Spark. I made a video where I showed you about koalas. Koalas, import koalas on PySpark. Now this is now if you want the next step Koala 2.0 or not, the Panda API. This is brand new in Apache Spark 3.2. And I just want to show you how it works. You import your PySpark Panda as PS. Then you just have your normal command read CSV file. I have here a TSV file, a tab separated file. And then I say, show me the data. And you see here, I have a word embedding in a three-dimensional uh, vector space. And just to make sure, I have 39,112 rows and five columns. And if I want to make sure that it's working, I have here the type is PySpark Panda data frame. The new Panda API on PySpark. Now, what are the benefits of this? You have a scalability beyond a single machine. You know that the limitation in Pandas is that it does not scale with your data volume due to a single machine processing. Users of Pandas can scale and the performance can improve both with a single node machine and a multi-node Spark cluster. And a very nice thing here is that the Panda API on Spark outperform Pandas even on a single machine thanks to the optimization in the Spark engine. Of course, this is not if you have very tiny files, but if you have a huge chunk of data, this is really interesting to see. But another very nice thing is interactive data visualization. And just to remind you here, if you have your classical pandas and you say, let's plot, you know that you have a plot with matplotlib. But the nice thing is now that with the Panda API on Spark, they use Plotly backend by default. So you can have here some very nice interactive graphic. And this is one of the benefits if you are on PySpark and you have your Panda API that you just say plot the area and you have an interactive graph visualization. But this is not the only point that is very nice. Panda is designed for Python data science with batch processing, whereas Spark is designed for Unified Analytics, SQL, Spark Streaming, Machine Learning, and so on. And the nice thing here is you can directly query your data via SQL 
with a Spark optimized engine. So let's have a look. We have here our Panda our data frame. Then we just create a Spark data frame, spark.create data frame. And then we create from the Spark data frame, you can create a Panda on Spark data frame, which you can directly apply your SQL commands on. So if you just make a count of this list, you see there are six entries in this list. But of course, if you have a more complex operation, and since you are now working with the Panda API on Spark on a cluster or different clusters, you run into a machine that can be actually quite computational expensive. And therefore, it is a good idea to use Spark Explain so that you can see the complexity before you start the job, what complexities you run into and if you, <coughs> you want to use some other commands. And I want to show you this in the next paragraph where the heading is use Pandas API on Spark directly whenever possible. Of course, uh, Panda operate on a single machine. Now we operate in a Spark cluster in the cloud. So just a reminder, Panda API, there was, if there was some iteration involved, no problem because we have a single machine. Now that we have where our pandas on Spark that is it lives on multiple machine in the cloud, you have to compute in a distributed manner. And this is quite difficult for the data. So they say here, and Panda, 3, uh, Panda API on Spark 3.2 is quite new, just some days out here now at this point, that it is best to stick to using pandas on Spark API directly. So you can see here we have PySpark pandas as PS and we have our series object and then we calculate the maximum, minimum and the sum and this goes directly here. Very nice. Next point I want to show you that the pandas on Spark data frame and the Spark data frame are virtually interchangeable. Now this is an interesting point because I thought, okay, I have the Spark data frame, I have the pandas, and now as a third category, I get the POC pandas on Spark data frame. <laughs> I would say it's a tongue twister. Uh, what is now the, the differentiation characteristics? So let me show you this, how you can convert one into the other. And let's start here. Let's say here you have a uh, Panda Spark range 10 and you just want to make sure that this is really a PySpark Panda data frame and then you convert it the data frame to a Spark data frame if you say a filter operation with greater 5 you get then the result here but just to check that the object we return is indeed a Spark data frame a Spark SQL data frame, and you have here the confirmation. This is a Spark data frame now after the conversion to Spark. So be careful if you convert one object into the other, because this can be quite confusing if you start to learn it, if you start to operate with this API. Of course, a Spark data frame can be converted to a panda on Spark data frame easily with the command two pandas on Spark. And to show you this, this is easy. And if you want to justify, say, is this really a PySpark panda data frame? And you see, this is it, two pandas on Spark. So this is all the conversion that's going on. Yes. You can convert Panda on Spark data frame to a pure Panda, to a classical single machine Panda data frame. Of course, this is also happening with just two Pandas. Now, the last point I want to make is interesting to transform and apply a function on a Panda on Spark data frame. And as you are familiar, there's a difference between uh, the transform and the apply command. And here, we have here the example, and I just want to show you the documentation. You have spark apache.org docs latest, 
and Apache Spark 3.2.0. And if you go into overview, and you can here have here examples, the shell, the cluster, and the programming guide, the API docs, Python API. So you have here a very excellent documentation. I would highly recommend to you that you have here an API reference and a user guide in case you have any question on this new Panda API on Spark. And here the last point, uh, as I told you, apply some transform batch. And of course, now we have pandas on Spark operating on a cluster in the cloud. We have batch processing. And of course, uh, what it does is that in both examples, A and B, we take a panda data frame as a chunk of panda on Spark data frame. Of course, this runs on different machines and it outputs a panda data frame. And then the Panda API on Spark combines the multiple Panda data frame as a new Panda on Spark data frame. Heaven's sake, it's more complicated to explain, but if you have a look at the example, it is quite self-explanatory. You have here a Panda on Spark data frame, A and B. You define a function. And then you say, okay, panda on Spark transform batch with the function you defined, panda plus. And then you just want to make sure that the new type that you receive back is a PySpark panda data frame. PySpark panda data frame. And the other one is if you have arbitrary length, you have to apply, you define again the function panda plus, and you apply now the batch function the apply batch command with the function. And as you can see, you still get a PySpark Panda data frame because as you told you, the Panda API on Spark combines the Panda data frames it gets back from the uh, cluster and combines it to a Pandas on Spark data frame. This is a very short introduction on the new feature Panda API on Spark in Spark 3.2. I think it's great. Uh, this, if you're familiar with Koalas, I suppose this was substitute the Koalas. This is now a native uh, Spark, PySpark. And I can say I will try it out in the next day. But to give you just a very short overview, have a look at the new Spark 3.2. Thank you and I see you in the next video.